dearly beloved, Randy and Tiffany come today in the sight of God and in your presence to witness their love for one another and in holy matrimony, which is commended by the Apostle Paul to be honorable among all men. And therefore it is not by any to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but reverently, discreetly, advisedly, soberly, and in the fear and reverence of our Almighty God. Into this holy estate, these two, Randy and Tiffany, come and present to be joined as husband and wife. Who gives this woman to be married? This man, another and I. We'd like to welcome you on behalf of Randy and Tiffany as they exchange their vows this morning. Afternoon, rather, and uh, the bonds of matrimony. You may be seated. Thank you for guests and family for coming and being a part of this passing occasion. I'd like to read uh, Tiffany and Randy about the day that love was born. The angel saw it all. Our Creator spoke, and suddenly the dark, swirling chaos of the cosmos disappeared, leaving an ordered universe in its place. Night, day, land, water, word by word, day by day, the plan of the Creator unfolded before the heavenly host, each creation more wonderful than the last. The Father spoke, the Spirit moved, and the angels applauded. Marvelous, cried one angel. Incredible, said another. The brilliant blue and green planet beckoned with beauty, nestled against the black night, sprinkled with stars, layered with lush forests and soaring mountains. It was a place fit for a king as though God himself would dwell there. And yet it was so. Each evening the Creator left his throne and walked in the garden he created, visiting the man he formed from the dust of this new world. The man created to fellowship with God Almighty. Why, the angels wondered, never had such an honor been given. And yet somehow they understood the heart of the Creator was so large it ached to love. The adoration of angels and their unrestrained praise filled his ears but failed to touch his heart. He longed for love. Not fearful reverence, but love. Laughter echoed across the garden and into the heaven. The fellowship was sweet. Our Creator smiled as our creation, Adam, named each animal, exulting in every one. Together they explored the secrets of Eden and the wonder of this new friendship. But as the days passed, a growing conviction gripped the heart of our Creator, a bittersweet realization that there was still more to give. Each creature had a mate, another of its kind. But the man was alone. It is, not for man, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helpmate. And so God formed the woman from a rib from the man and called her woman. And Adam said, now this surely bone of my bone is my helpmate. For God so loved that he gave Though it meant sacrificing the single-minded devotion of a man, God gave. Though it meant sharing the communion meant only for him, God gave. Though it meant the willful disobedience of man and woman that would someday, someday cost the Creator the life of his dear son, God 
gave. We too must give if we endeavor to love. Love holds no room for selfishness. It is only in laying down our lives that we find it. It is only in losing that we win. We can learn a lot from the day love was born. I'd like to read to you now one of the most favorite chapters in the Bible of love, chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians. If I had the gift of being able to speak in other languages without learning them and could speak in every language there is in all of heaven and earth, but didn't love others, I would only be making noise. If I had the gift of prophecy and knew about all what is going to happen in the future, knew everything